Hi guys, Dr. Gideon here. In today's class, we are going to solve some numericals on hydraulic machine. In a Pelton wheel, the bucket's peripheral speed is 10 meter per second. The water jet velocity is 25 meter per second. And volumetric flow rate of the Z is 0.1 meter cube per second. If the Z deflection angle is 120 degree and the flow is ideal, the power developed is we have to find. This one is the typical sectional view of the Pelton wheel bucket. And the water from the nozzle strikes the Pelton wheel in this way. And it is represented by V1, which is 25 meter per second. And this one is the bucket's peripheral speed, which is here 10 meter per second. So this one would be relative velocity at inlet, which is mathematically V1 minus U. And its value is coming out 15 meter per second. The Z deflection angle is 120 degree. So the relative velocity at the exit to the bucket will be in this way. If we draw bucket's peripheral speed in this way, then this would be the absolute velocity at exit. And we have to find the power developed by the Pelton wheel. We all know that expression for power is force into velocity and here this velocity would be bucket's peripheral velocity and this force would be tangential component of the force which is nothing but the rate of change of momentum in x direction. If we take bucket as a system then this tangential component of force would be m dot into change in relative velocity of the water z in x direction and mathematically it is m dot into relative velocity at inlet minus relative velocity at outlet one should note that we have taken only the relative velocity component over here because when you are on the bucket you will observe only the relative velocity and if we take water z as a system then this tangential component of force would be m dot into change in absolute velocity of water z in x direction mathematically it is m dot into absolute velocity at inlet minus absolute velocity at outlet one should also note that here we have taken only the absolute velocity component because when you are inside the water z you will observe only the absolute velocity component it is interesting to know that tangential component of force when bucket as a system and tangential component of force when water z as a system both will be same why because we are just changing the frame of reference not the actual situation when we further analyze this situation then for ideal flow losses would be zero then in this situation magnitude of relative velocity at inlet to the bucket will be equal to magnitude of relative velocity at the exit to the bucket since magnitude of relative velocity is not changing, that's why this force is only because of the change in the direction of the relative velocity. And if we observe this situation, then magnitude of absolute velocity at inlet will not be equal to the magnitude of absolute velocity at exit. In fact, it is greater than the magnitude of the absolute velocity at the exit. That's why this if is because of the change in the direction as well as change in its magnitude of the absolute velocity in x direction. 
again if we take bucket as a system then the tangential component of the force would be this and if we take the magnitude of relative velocity then its expression will be this where m dot is density into discharge and it is already been discussed that the magnitude of relative velocity at the exit to the bucket will be equal to the magnitude of the relative velocity at the inlet to the bucket for ideal flow on putting these expressions into this equation we will get this and on putting the given values into it we will get the tangential component of force will be 2250 newton so the power delivered would be 22500 watt which is also equal to the 22.5 kilowatt so option c is correct and if we take water is it as a system then again velocity profile at the bucket would be this now we have to find the value of this v2 so from cosine law the value of v2 is coming out approximately 13.2 meter per second and after this we are going to need the value of this angle alpha 2 so from sine law we get this and the value of alpha 2 is coming out approximately 80 degree. Now we have the value of V2 and alpha 2. So we can proceed for the tangential component of the force. And it is already been discussed that for water Z as a system, the expression for the tangential component of force is this. And if we put the magnitude of absolute velocities, its expression will be this. On putting the given values into it, we get tangential component of force is approximately around 2270 Newton. So the power developed would be 22,700 watts which is also equal to the 22.7 kilowatt so again option c is correct here you can see that in both frame of reference we are getting approximately same answer but the calculations on the first frame of reference was quite easy that's why i will advise you to take bucket as a system for better convenience let's solve another question a sprinkler shown in the figure rotates about its hinge point in a horizontal plane due to water flow discharge through its two exit nozzles the total flow rate through the sprinkler is one liter per second and the cross sectional area of each exit nozzle is 1 cm square. Assuming equal flow rate through both arms and a frictionless hinge, the steady state angular speed of rotation of the sprinkler is we have to find. Let this is the sprinkler and suppose initially it is not rotating. And this is the velocity of discharge at point A. And this is the velocity of discharge at point B. Then mathematically, the velocity of discharge at point A will be discharge upon area, which is coming out 5 meter per second. Similarly, discharge velocity at point B is coming out 5 meter per second. Now let's consider its angular velocity of rotation. Now because of this angular velocity, point A on the sprinkler will also acquire a tangential component of velocity. Let this velocity is UA. Similarly, tangential component of velocity because of its rotation at point B is UB. 
mathematically value of this ua is omega into distance of this point from the axis of rotation which is coming out 0.1 into omega similarly value of this ub is coming out 0.2 into omega now if we take a sprinkler as our system then the relative velocity of the charge at point a will be this and the relative velocity of the charge at point b will be this if we analyze this section in detail we will find that water is coming in this way and it is going out in this way then from newton's third law of motion a reaction force will be developed in this way whose value is nothing but the rate of change of momentum in y direction mathematically we can write this here mass flow rate is density into half of total discharge final velocity is this and initial velocity in y direction is zero so on putting this value into the equation we will get this similarly if we observe this portion of the sprinkler in detail we will find that water is coming in this way and it is going out in this way and from newton's third law of motion a reaction force will be exerted in this way whose magnitude is coming out this for sake of simplicity let's again draw this sprinkler reaction force at point a is acting in this way of magnitude this and the reaction force at b is acting in this way of magnitude this then for the rotational motion of the sprinkler summation of moment about the hinge will be equal to mass moment of inertia about hinge into angular acceleration about hinge here this angular acceleration about hinge is zero for a steady state so summation of moment about hinge is coming out zero on putting the given values and solving we will get the steady state angular speed of rotation of the sprinkler e 10 radian per second that's it for this class guys if you found my these video useful chances are my these videos are useful too so check out these videos and subscribe my channel just click on this and don't forget to click the bell icon thank you for watching this video till end i really appreciate